Welcome to the RV Podcast 364. Have you ever wanted to remodel an older RV instead of buying a new one? We're going to tell you how to do that and live to tell about it. Welcome, fellow travelers. It's time for another episode of the RV Podcast. Answering your questions, sharing tips, suggesting great trips and off the beaten path adventures, and always staying on top of the RV lifestyle news you need to know about with great interviews and inside industry information. Here's your hosts, award-winning journalists, Mike and Jennifer Wendland. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Welland, and this is Jennifer, my lifelong traveling companion and my bride. Hello, my dear. Hello, my Michael. Well, this is episode 364 of the RV Podcast, and this is a fun one because I think a lot of people have wondered, do we buy new or do we sort of fix up, remodel what we already have? And uh, we're going to hear from a great couple in our interview of the week coming up uh, who did just that. And we'll show you some, uh, those of you who watch it on our YouTube channel, uh, we'll show you some before and after pictures. Those of you who listen to the audio version, if you go to rvlifestyle.com, we'll also have a couple of before and after pictures. But more importantly, they're going to just love meeting this couple. It's a lot of fun remodeling it, believe it or not. And it gives hope to people like me who aren't very <laughs> talented with it. Well, I can't wait to have everybody see it and see what they say. <laughs> hey, quick heads up. Uh, on October 3rd, our current sweepstakes giveaway will expire, and we will announce uh, the winners of uh, the current sweepstakes. We were always giving away stuff, and this week it uh, is a uh, waggle cam. And a waggle cam is this kind of like a half baseball, half, a, half of a basketball-sized camera that works on the web and that will let you put it in your RV and you get to see your pet or your dog and, and uh, you can also hear what's going on in there. And you can talk to your pet and if your pet's being good, you can even launch a treat at your pet. You have a little app, you push a button and it will shoot out a treat. We did a whole video on it on our YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com slash RV Lifestyle and you'll see it. Uh, and then on our webpage, we did a, a review of it and a couple of other webcams, but we're giving away a $300 value waggle cam and also the, uh, the, the RV uh, pet safety temperature monitor, which uses another uh, app on your smartphone and tells you what the temperature is inside your RV. So if you travel with a pet, these are both great things to have. It's free to enter the thing. We'll announce the winners uh, on Ask Us Anything on Sunday night. Uh, and um, if you listen to this well into the future after we've done it, well, nevertheless, you can still go back and watch those videos. <laughs> It'll be kind of fun. I really think anybody that has a pet, you want to know how your pet is because there are times that your pet just can't join you. There are trails, sightseeing places, you can't take them, and you want to check up on them as often as you can. It gives you peace of mind. So enter as many times as you would like. Well, we're at the end of September. It is now officially... Uh, autumn again our favorite time of the year we have our fingers crossed we're hoping to go up to the upper peninsula of michigan and i sure hope we can the color is just starting i noticed on our walk today we take Bo to a, a little lake we visit a lake every morning on our hike with Bo, and i could see the color changing on that lake and it was spectacular it's just starting up in the up uh, about mid-october is when it starts to really just you know explode and uh, mid-October this year, though, we're going to be down in the Mississippi River, Natchez, with a group of uh, uh, people who are supporters of, of our uh, podcast and our Facebook uh, and YouTube uh, members. We're having a meetup on the Mississippi for three or four days in mid-October, so we hope to see some color as we're driving down. We're going to take our time driving to that. I sure hope so. I hope you're getting out there. This is just a great time to camp. This is the favorite time of year for me personally. I love it because there aren't as many bugs. I like the cool evenings where you can have a nice fire and in the morning take a brisk walk. I love fall. Yeah, I do too. I just, it's just, you know, it's only that magical few weeks. Fall in the upper Midwest, it's just spectacular. So uh, we hope to, uh, to get as much of that in before it, all the leaves are down and it gets too cold. Uh, then it's time to head south. So, hey, we've got some response we want to share with you, some of our previous episodes. Uh, this past week, we did Ask Us Anything, and we had a pretty robust conversation uh, in response to uh, how safe is it to go, how, how, what speed is too, too unsafe to go, is a better way to put it, when you're towing a travel trailer. 
And I know in an, uh, in a motorized home, you can go 70, 75 miles an hour. You know, they're, they're built for that, the tires. But there's a different specification for the tires in a towable. Yeah, with a towable, you're not supposed to, the average towable, go as fast as you would with your truck or your car. It depends on if you get an upgrade in tires, then possibly you can go a little bit faster. But your average trailer, the tire is just, what, 65? That's what one of our listeners named Bait Guru, how's that for a... He's a fisherman, as you'll hear in his note. He said, most trailer tires are not rated to go faster than 65 miles an hour if they're new and in great condition. There are now a few tires, higher end for trailers, rated to 75 miles an hour. He mentions Goodyear. Goodyear. Uh, he says, I tow a 21-foot fishing boat, and I try to purchase the best trailer tires as I tow around 70 miles an hour with my Motor home. Motor home. So that's yeah. why he calls himself Bait Guru because he's a <laughs> he's a fisherman. So uh, thank you, Bait Guru, for sharing that because we don't tow, so we don't know. Although I got an offer from uh, a company that makes a pretty cool travel trailer. They wanted us to just try it, and uh, maybe we'll take them up on that and do a camping trip and and uh, see how we like that. Are they going to give us a vehicle that can tow that trailer? Are they going to well, supply both? I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll let, that we'll could let you be know. Fun. Yeah, or it could be a lot of fun. I'll, I'll try it. Sure. I'd love to do it. And uh, you found a really interesting response uh, a couple weeks ago on the podcast. We uh, interviewed Cynthia, who is a retired teacher. Mm -hmm. she'd, she'd camped as a, early on in her life, but uh, all her life she's been dreaming of retiring and going full-time in an RV, even though she has never towed a vehicle before. So she bought a travel trailer and a truck to tow it. And she shared that in a podcast a couple of episodes ago. So we got a really interesting response from another retired solo female traveler named Anne. And do you want to share what Anne had to say? Sure. So Anne said that uh, she's also a solo woman traveling in her RV full time. She left Oklahoma the end of July and is currently in Florida, spending some time in an RV park close to where her oldest son and his family live. And she's going to be heading out west right after the holidays. And like the woman that you interviewed in your podcast, she's always wanted to do this for many years. And there are a few little things that you have to work out, but that she's always been a very determined woman. And when she decides to do something, she's going to do it. She's not a quitter. And this was her dream. And so she is living her dream. And she has a Class A, 27-foot that she's driving in. And uh, she says she has no desire for anything any larger, and she's having a really good time. Well, that is great. Um, we also got one from a woman named Sharon, and this was in response to something that Jennifer uh, offered a tip for on a recent podcast. And you, you had a tip about Ziploc bags, and you were showing how you can put food and stuff like that in the Ziploc bag. Well, Sharon uh, Sharon was pretty fun. She, she adds, she says... Uh, this was a really good program. I watched you now for over a year, maybe two. You guys are one of the ones who got me interested in the Mercedes Sprinter Class B. I now have owned mine for two years. I use the Ziploc bags for my underwear drawer. I find that they organize my socks and other things much easier, plus they compact better. Well, I think that does make a lot of sense because I always put my socks in a ball, and a ball That's takes up yeah. a lot of room. That's because I do it for you. <laughs> Because <laughs> you, it's such, it's so awful, pawing through everything, trying to find two socks that match. So uh, that that's a really good tip. Flat, they're flat. Put them in the Ziploc bag. Well, when we first started, remember, and people, we still, people still go back and watch that video. We don't use suitcases. We take our clothes in what are what are called e bags, and I don't know why they call them e bags. You think that's something with computers, but it's not. It's just a little zip up nylon bag and uh, I think you got like 14 t-shirts in one of them one time you did <laughs> yeah, a contest. Yeah, you wanted to know how many t-shirts we could get in one. But I got three pink ones or three pink <laughs> Yeah, you got three pink ones. <laughs> got three pink ones for her and I got uh, three blue ones and that's all we use. We use those to take all of our, our clothes. Now we have some that we can hang up in the RV but the Ziploc bags are the same principle as the e-bags is that you can put them in a container and they kind of compact easily. So. And these bags that we got, you can put them in a suitcase to keep things together yeah. 
it's I love these bags. They're just great. And they've held up. We've had them now a lot of 10 years. years we've been doing this. So. And also, if you're only going for a couple of days, you could take the clothes for one day, clothes for the next day in these bags. Yeah. So you get three of them. All right. When we come back, we're going to talk about remodeling an RV, and you're going to meet Dave and Joe, and you're going to learn a lot from this couple. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Fall is just around the corner, so it's time to start thinking about prepping for the off-season. And whether you own an RV, a travel trailer, or a camper, EmpireCovers.com is here to help you protect all your vehicles against Mother Nature. EmpireCovers.com offers high-quality, affordable covers that are engineered to protect. Every cover comes with a free multi-year warranty to guarantee that it remains durable over time. If you're not in need of a full cover, Empire has just launched a line of RV rooftop covers that keep the roof of your RV clean and protected from UV rays. Listeners can receive free shipping and 60% off the original price of their cover order. Visit empirecovers.com slash RV lifestyle or use the promo code RV60 at checkout. Empirecovers.com, protect what you love. Tired of overcrowded campgrounds? Competing for reservations? Paying high fees for sites? Well, ownership is an emerging trend in RVing that might be right for you. Jennifer and I visited the Landings, a lakefront community just west of Nashville, Tennessee, that offers incredible lakefront RV properties up to 70 times the size of typical RV lots with frontage on the biggest lake in Tennessee. We loved it. The scenery is breathtaking and you own it outright. Not a timeshare, your property, your way. You can have your own private dock. You can landscape, garden. They're pet friendly. It's gated and secure with high speed internet. There's even free RV and boat storage. A wonderful place to make your home base. No more calling around for reservations. It's ready whenever you want. Dockable lakefronts starting at only $59,900. There's financing and big discounts on multi-lot packages. For information, visit rvlakes.com. That's rvlakes.com. Welcome back, and now it's time for the interview of the week. And this week, I interview a couple, uh, Dave and Joe Driscoll is their last name, and uh, they're from Georgia, and they have an 18-year-old RV. And like a lot of people, uh, they wondered, well, should, should we get a new one? It's time to update, and you know, we, maybe it's time to f- get things fixed, and well, do we do it ourselves, or do we get a new one? And they decided, no, they liked that RV, and uh, it ran great. It's in great condition. They just wanted to update the inside, so they began a remodeling project, and uh they had no experience doing this before at all. They weren't DIY people. Dave was not a handyman. Dave is 81, and Joe is 71, and she's not a handy woman. But they know how to search the internet and use Google and ask questions, and uh, they do things the right way. And they know when they don't know how to do something, where to go to get the help to do that. So we're going to have some before and after pictures. We'll post them on the rvlifestyle.com travel blog. And we'll also put some of the pictures in our video version of this podcast that we uh, broadcast on uh, the uh, YouTube RV Lifestyle channel. But you're going to enjoy the interview of the week with uh, Joe and Dave Driscoll. Well, Dave and Joe join us now from their home in Lake Lanier, Georgia. Uh, and I guess before I get too far, where is your RV right now? It's getting some re- some more work done on it yet, right? Yeah. It's actually at uh, Camping World in Oakland, near oh. like Oakwood, near Gainesville. Okay. And that's uh, uh, been a uh, – let's tell everybody a little bit about all the work that you did on this. Uh, and uh, just to recap, describe your RV – how old it is, and why you decided to do this big remodel. Okay, it's about 18 years old, and we, um, when we bought it, of course, it had the regular, the, the original cabinets, the color, the walls, the little wallpaper border, and the stuff that it comes from the factory with. Um, the, the, it, we're only the third owner, so it's, it was in great shape, very low mileage. So we decided, I decided... <laughs> I have to say he goes along with me but it was like okay this is just so dark and I just I couldn't deal with it and so 
we decided to paint the the walls white. Uh, the lower cabinets in the kitchen we painted. It's supposed to be gray, but it's really a blue gray. And then we did the. Actually, I found it all day. The press and seal the subway tile. So that's what it's in the kitchen around on the wall. And um, I used uh, uh, from from uh, Amazon the sticky countertop uh, paper or vinyl to do the countertops. Uh, we actually bought a new uh, faucet for it. We're doing black faucets throughout. And that's what it's, Camper Roll is putting a sink in and reinstalling the, or installing the faucets for us. We put a new sink in the bathroom, new faucets in the bathroom. Um, we put in the, we bought a new love seat, took out the Jack Knight sofa, got rid of one of the benches and put a new love seat in there. I covered the bench that was left. And then we painted the bathroom. We did a backsplash in the bathroom and um, new sink, new faucets in the bathroom. And then in the bedroom, of course, new bedspread and stuff, but it painted white. I put a, um, a shiplap wallpaper in there and it, it really turned out nicely. And then we got from uh, uh, factory, fact, factory direct blinds, I think is the name. Is it, It's those three words. I'm not sure it was factory blinds direct, but I got all of the shades from there and I got the day, day blackout shades. So the daytime, it lets all the the light in but at night of course we pull them up and it's dark in there he painted he took all the hardware off with the exception of the lights in the bedroom which he's going to do that the lights by the bed he took them all off and painted them black and what else did we do new floor let's start with a couple of uh, quick questions uh okay. how long did this how long did this process take Oh, my goodness. Well, to say the truth, uh, it was elongated because we both were hospitalized with COVID. Oh, my goodness. So uh, we started uh, last November, and then uh, it was interrupted. So we didn't start again until January when we had the strength to do that. So we've been working on it for ooh, a good uh, seven, eight months. Yeah. And you're son- still doing some work. Right. Yeah. I'm almost finished. Yeah. Yeah. yeah still working. Now, yeah, one son, question. Our son your son helped you? Takes, well, no, he said, you know, we took a little break where we would take the camper out because he said, enjoy your your labors and then you can come back and work on it some more. So we've had that a little great advice. Yeah. That is great advice. So uh, now you have an 18 year old RV. So you, you must have at one point said, well, do we want to replace it or do we want to remodel it? And what made that choice for you? Well, you know what? I think both of us, I can't, I'm, Dave, can, Dave can say yes or no. We love the RV. We just love it. It feels good. Um, and so that's why we decided that we could, I had a vision and I you know, decided that we could make it what we needed and what would be comfortable for us. And so we really... You know, I've looked at some of the some of them online and stuff, and some of the people who've bought new ones and stuff, and it's like, I really like the color scheme in ours. So I really we haven't been tempted. Have you? No, we. This is our first one. We we had a, a tritune on the lake, and which I didn't enjoy, but the RV I enjoy and she enjoys mm-hmm. because the scenery is always changing when you're traveling. On a lake, it stays the same. Yep. Yeah. Now, the uh, how, how much did all of this cost in terms of money to do a remodel that extensive? Uh, we're very thrifty and very look like bargains. So it was only about twenty five hundred dollars. So really? Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. like you have a brand new RV. Yeah, it is. We did change mattresses, too, in the bad bedroom. But yeah, it was about twenty five hundred dollars. Now, a lot of people are wondering about something like this. Are you two people particularly crafty and handy, or is this the kind of thing that most people can do? I would think most people can do it. Uh, I, I'd rather dig in the dirt, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a handyman, but uh, and I'm 
I'm 80 years old, so uh, I can't do a whole lot. But uh, I, I think it's it was a, a goal of my wife to have this, and she had the vision. So we just decided, I I decided <laughs> to follow her vision. Yeah, and it really is stuff that people could do because it's you know you're painting. Um, we actually, and our son did help us take out the faucet in the bathroom, but Dave installed the new one and we put the new sink in. Um, you know, that wasn't an issue, but it's like electrical stuff and plumbing stuff that you don't know how to do. You would need to get professional help, but the painting, um, we didn't do any sanding because I hate to sand. It's such a mess. Um, the one thing that I would do different is. In the bathroom, we put primer on everything first and then painted it white. Anything different I would do would be putting primer on the rest of the cabinets and walls outside the bathroom because it just made it easier to cover it up. Um, I used Beyond Paint for the for the uh, refrigerator and I, it did really well with that, but the other was just a Sharon Williams paint, the self-leveling paint. Now that was uh, the question I had. Is is there special materials that people need when they want to give a, a, a rejuvenated look to their RV? You bought stuff at at Sherwin Williams. You bought stuff. You said at Amazon. Uh, I think of the flooring, for example. Uh, Home is that, Depot. Is that Home Depot. <laughs> it was and those on were sale stick on. on. Pardon? Yep. Those were stick on, right? Yep. Yep. And it yeah. was on sale at Home Depot, so you know that wasn't even very much. So. And, and you know, so many people look at this and just and and do I think buy a new RV because they say, oh, I'll never make ours what we we want it to be. Uh, yeah. And you guys have to feel very proud about this. We are, and we love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a lot of a lot of work that we put into that, but it was, it was something we both enjoyed doing. We mm -hmm. go out and work on it for you know two or three hours, and or Joe would go out and work on it. 10 or 12 hours. <laughs> Joe, what's for people who are thinking about doing the same thing, what is the process like? How do you begin something like this? You said you had a vision. What, what does that mean? Well, I wanted it light and airy. I wanted it to, to not look close or feel closed in. And so I think the white and the blue kind of makes it light and airy. We divided it into three zones. My my son, our son actually suggested this and it was a good idea because he said, think of like the, the kitchen, the living area, the dinette table, think of that as zone one. Think of the bedroom as zone two. Think of the bathroom as zone three. And then over the cab, which we still have to do, that's zone four. But we're just using that for storage. So we're not, it's not something that we're, you know, raring to get because it really doesn't matter it'll just make it look better to us yeah so you started you, you think of the areas that you have to do but where do you begin researching to get the the supplies and the paint and all of that stuff how how did you find all that well i saw on some of the websites where someone had used beyond paint and so I was what is beyond it. paint maybe you could explain what that beyond is beyond paint it's actually that, that is the company's name, and that is their paint name. And their, their uh, tagline or what they advertise is that no sanding, no priming. And that it's just a, it's not a one coat paint, but you just simply paint it on and it levels itself out. So I actually went to Sharon Williams looking for that paint because the website said it was there. And they didn't have it, but they sold me another, their paint that was a, primer paint and it was self-leveling um whether it was a primer paint combined we had to put a lot of coats on the white and um so i think if i had it to do over again like i said i would i'd wipe the counter down with um shoot is it tsp or with a good cleaner i wiped it down with a good cleaner and then we just painted we painted over it took the dave took the doors off the drawers out and painted um it did have like a tv there's a big opening uh to the between the refrigerator and the counter and stove there's an opening above where the tv was uh, over that countertop 
So we took the TV out and we actually just put a big basket up there in the opening that is where we store all of our large bowls. Um, and <laughs> I'm a talker. What can I say? She'll go, she'll go into detail. Yeah. Well, I think that's what people would like to hear. They, they, you know, so many of them want to do this and, uh, one, you know, you guys aren't spring chickens. No, and 71 two, and 81. And the fact that you guys also uh, are not remodeling experts or a handy man and a handy woman, uh, whatever the term is now for somebody who has those skills, and that you just did this yourself and survived. You survived it. <laughs> and you have a beautiful RV. Uh, Thank you. I mean, it looks brand new. Uh, we just came from the Hershey Show. And your interior, the photos I've seen, are equal to anything we've seen in, in that show. Uh, well, thank you. Advice to people who want to do this besides go ahead and do it. Uh, what, what are some of the lessons that you might have learned? Dave, how about you? What, you know, what, what did you learn about all of this? <laughs> I learned she's right. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you knew that before. Uh, I just have a feeling. <laughs> uh, we, yeah. we, we, we can go our own way from time to time. But no, she, we would argue over how to proceed. <laughs> processes she's right so <laughs> it was it, it was a lot of it was a lot of fun it was a lot of frustration it was a lot of sweat yeah uh, it, it just it took time I and mean, we took all the handles off and i took all the handles off and repainted them black spray paint i mean <laughs> and light fixtures i would have left them <laughs> you would have left them yeah <laughs> He took those, the light fixture down and spray painted those black. Um, the only ones that we have yet to do are the two that are in the bedroom over the bed. But with the black handles, uh, faucets in the kitchen and in the bathroom, it just looks better with the black, black handles and stuff. What was the most frustrating part about all of this? <laughs> Trying to work in the same space at the same time. And there's not much room. <laughs> yeah, that's a problem of every RV, though, isn't it? You know, it is. It is. Uh, it was, yeah, it was. I was uh, exasperated with Joe because she, she's a trained nurse, retired nurse, so everything has to be perfect. <laughs> and when you try to get the lines on wallpaper, it don't work. <laughs> I oh think my. our big expense was having to replace all the paper that she ruined, or not ruined, but discarded and had to replace but uh, uh it's it, it's it's very exacting so you have to get into very tight areas and uh at our age particularly if I, if we were younger we would have knocked it out in probably three weeks but uh, we we took our time and uh, we did what we could and we stopped when we could we take off and take a little trip when we could so so your advice is to do it, is to do it, to give yeah. it a try, right? Yeah. If, if, you, if you go wrong, you redo it again. And we've redone things many times to get it right. But it looks great. But it hasn't, you know, really, truly, it hasn't gone over that $2,500. Um, because, you know, I'm a bargain shopper, so I try to find things that I like that are on sale um, and pick it up. Now, but, I noticed you didn't you didn't do any solar panels or any big inverters or any of that stuff. All that new technology you didn't do any of that. What uh, we did we, do, we did a the tire monitoring pressure system. We did that. Now, and this isn't included in the twenty five hundred. That's just the painting and decorating part of it. But we did that. We did an EMS, a uh, 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 installed one in the system. Um, a leveling pro. We did the level pro. What else do well, we do? We've replaced both awnings. Well, that was no. our fault. It wasn't you know, <laughs> true. They came almost new and we it was our it was our learning experience. We've we've all had those. We've yes. all had those. Well, now that you guys have figured all of this out, I wanted to let you know that I will be bringing my RV down to Lake Lanier, <laughs> Georgia next week. And you've got a week or two to do a couple of things that we'd like to have <laughs> fixed up in ours. So it'll be there. Bring no my Dave and, Just bring my Thank you. 
Yeah, I bring money. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing this and learning how to remodel an RV and still survive and live to tell about it. <laughs> Uh, I want to thank you also for being part of our uh, RV Lifestyle Facebook group and posting those photos. Uh, folks are going to love seeing this interview. And we have 80,000 people on that group. And uh, you had a right. very popular post. And they're all going to love to, to actually meet you guys through this video. So thank you for sharing this. And Dave and Joe, I hope that uh, Jennifer and I meet you out on the road someday. Love hope to. so. Well, that was really fun. What a delightful couple. And they did such a good job. Maybe there's hope for you and me. <laughs> That's what I said Maybe at we the could end. do this. I told Dave, I, oh, you heard at the end of the interview, I said, I'm, uh, ours will be in your driveway next week. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they did, a, they did a great job. And he really does give hope to people like me because, mm -hmm. you know, and his advice was, you know, if you don't know how to do it, just do some searching around and you'll find somebody else has done it. And, we'll, you know, you can find a video or instructions on how to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, like you said right at the top, the fact that they know when to get help for something that's, that's above their skill set. Mm -hmm. I like that. Hey, did, have you remodeled your RV? Would love to hear your story as well. Send us your pictures. Just uh, reach out to us at Mike and Jennifer at RVLifestyle.com. We'd love to see and hear about your experience and share that with our audience as well. All right, when we come back, the RV news of the week. When we're on a road trip, we always seem to find a way to stop at a Camping World Center. There are over 225 Camping World locations across the country, and there's always one close by when we need parts and accessories for our RV or just want to shop. In fact, uh, we have so much fun with uh, Camping World, and as we talk about it as one of our sponsors, they have agreed to offer a 10% discount if you use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10. When you buy $99 or more in merchandise, you'll find everything you want from outdoor furniture and appliances, the ones you see us use in our videos and that we talk about here in the podcast. RV extras that include everything from camping chairs to fire pits, electrical accessories, must-have gadgets. Check them all out. And again, don't forget, use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you visit CampingWorld.com. Have you had it with overbooked, overcrowded campgrounds? Then check out Harvest Hosts, where RVers can overnight for free at more than 2,400 wineries, farms, microbreweries, golf courses, and attractions. Harvest Host is a membership service for those with self-contained RVs looking for unique, beautiful, and peaceful overnight camping experiences across North America. When you become a member of Harvest Host, you can camp for free at all these places. Jennifer and I are Harvest Host members, and we've made so many great memories at Harvest Host locations. There's no charge for camping, and your Harvest Host membership fee is easily made up with just a couple of stays. Plus, you have awesome places to stay. If you use our special affiliate link of rvlifestyle.com slash HH, you'll automatically get 15% off the cost of your membership. That's 15% off, but you must use the special link, rvlifestyle.com slash HH. Now it's time for the RV News of the Week, and welcome back for that. Yeah. What, What's our first story? Well, I was going to ask you what you thought was the most important story. We, all, we, we kind of do this every week. We say, well, what are we going to share? And we... we we we're always looking to see what's going on in the business. So what did you find? What, was, what do you think I was the most think significant the story? the most significant story of the week is from uh, the RV Business Magazine, because we all had hopes that all the uh, dealers were going to be well stocked with new vehicles by 2022. And now they're saying it could be 2023 before the inventories are back where we would like them. RV business is kind of the daily news Bible for the RV industry. It's targeted at RV news execs. And they did a survey early in the summer. And everybody in the industry said, oh, it's going to be all better by, they thought, you know, middle of 2021. And... Uh, and that's not the case at all. Now, as Jennifer says, they're thinking these parts shortages and supply chain problems are going to delay construction, and it isn't going to be until next year or 2023 till things get uh, back to normal. That's that's pretty pretty funny. Why is this? Why do they think this is the case? Well, it's a shortage of parts, and then I'm sure the shortage of labor. It's hard to get workers as well yeah but they do have a lot of travel trailers there I, are some things out there, there are that the you travel trailers you know you can get there's still a delay on some of them but but uh it'll be interesting to see because when we were at hershey 
there were a number of manufacturers who just didn't even go to the show because they had no new units to, to, to display. And everything that they did have, they were building on previous orders, filling orders that they had. Uh, and same with the number of dealers. Uh, Camping World, biggest RV dealer out there, they, don't even, they didn't even show at Hershey. They did a, some virtual online thing. So people, uh, this, this is going to stay with us for a long time. And I guess uh, uh, maybe we're all going to be following Joe and, uh, and Dave and remodeling <laughs> our RVs because uh, the parts shortage, the worker shortage, and this continuing demand, high demand, I thought the demand would start to peak this year. It's not. The demand is still there by consumers. So, And even if you do buy that travel trailer, you need something to pull it with. And you got so a there's problem, another issue. New trucks with those chip shortages. Yeah, if you drive past a car dealer a lot, just like the RV dealers, there's not a lot there. Well, the story that got my attention the most this week is, was in, I think, uh, New York Daily News. And it had to do with a... I guess we can call this an enterprising sort of, uh, of uh, entrepreneur, but with a slightly shady side. This is a guy who bought up a fleet of... Seven? Seven, I don't want to say ratty ba- vans, but older vans that he turned into... Uh, he called them Airbnbs for the van life, and he offered for $97 a night, you could sleep on the street in one of these vans. And uh, people who did rent one of these from him said it was a bit noisy. And then, of course, having a bathroom and There's shower. There's no bathroom. There's no bathroom or they shower. They didn't have running water in there. So he directed them to a park where they could use the bathroom and shower. In New York City. Or go to the Starbucks or McDonald's. That's what they told him to use to find the bathroom. Yeah, so in the middle of the night, it could be a problem if you if you needed to use the bathroom. Well, I found a YouTube video that one of their customers did. And, uh, you know, he was like, uh, it kind of smells in this thing. <laughs> it's cozy. but And he was like, this is so weird. I got to go to the bathroom. I got to go pee and there's no place to go. And he's wandering the streets of New York at night in... Anyway, they caught and this guy. And his jammies guy. with his teddy bear? <laughs> yeah, have his jammies. They say. But uh, kind of an eagle-eyed traffic enforcement guy saw these old vans. And it was a pretty, I don't want to say eagle-eyed because. I was going to say, I don't think yeah. you need too big of an eagle eye to see uh, license plates that are totally expired by yes, many years. Some of them were like from 2020, you know, and these license plates were expired. Or some going back, they said, as far as 2000. And even that guy's YouTube video, he, he, there was a key there, and he tried to start it. It wouldn't even start the engine. Now, maybe they disconnect it so people yeah, don't move so it. Yeah, so people don't Probably run off it. with it. But anyway, they they caught this guy, and they said it's uh, against all these violations that they, that they, they all against all these, they issued all these violations, and they towed away the vans. And uh, that was my uh, story of so the, the week. So the moral of the story is, if you're going to be an entrepreneur and you're going to do this, get Current license plates. Current plate. license plate tags, I'm, you yeah. got to move these things, too. I can't leave them there forever, I wouldn't think. So we, we don't know who owned these yet. They didn't say any of that. But uh, uh, an entrepreneur had an idea, and it just didn't work out quite the way he said. He probably did for a while, because I think he'd been doing this for a long time, renting these things out. 97 bucks a night, 700 bucks a night. That could be a pretty good haul. Mm-hmm. Parked on the street. Uh, oh, well. Now, you know... I think it is okay if it's your van and you move it every 24 hours. Uh, at least I know a whole bunch of people who have stealth camped in New York City. But um, I, I guess you just don't want to sell it to the public uh, like that. All right, what other stories we got? Well, this is a disappointing story. Our U.S. borders to let the Canadians come and camp in this country They've got it closed again for another month, and who knows when they're going to open up the borders. I mean, it's been over 18 months that Canadians have not been able to come to the States. And the snowbirds with uh, winter coming, they want to go to Florida and Arizona and Texas and all the other places where they might own property or, you know, they want to come camp. And uh, they can't. Now, people from the States, we can go up to Canada, but there's a whole bunch of loops that we have to jump hoops i should say to yeah. jump through to do that yeah uh, but canada basically opened the border to um vaccinated uh u.s citizens who want to testing yeah and if you know you had to get tested if you you haven't been and, and a plan in case you get it yeah um but but they opened it basically in june and they thought that we would open it we didn't 
then they've been keeping it you know postponed month by month and now it's postponed at least until october 21st maybe longer and snowbirds are now trying to make their plans you know how hard it is to get a spot in the summertime in a warm place you know in the along the gulf coast or in florida or in the southwest and uh, they don't know for sure that it's going to be open in october and most of the snowbird migration begins right after halloween so halloween and uh and then right after christmas christmas yeah. for sure yeah. you know people want to get out of that cold weather and go someplace warm in the winter so fingers crossed for our snowbird friends in in uh, in canada our snowbird friends we hope we can see you down here this year but uh who knows what's going on and uh what else we got well, anything else i think something that's disappointing but i understand why states do it oregon has uh made a tourist tax and it, you're going to pay 25% more if you're not a resident of the state of uh, Oregon to camp in their campgrounds. I know there are other other states that have um, higher fees. I think most of them do for uh, uh, not out-of-state visitors. But mm -hmm. a 25% increase is pretty pretty. I stiff. mean, there is so much competition for those prize camping sites, and there's not that many of them. And the people who live in the state who pay their taxes all year round, they want first dibs, I guess. They want to keep the others out or raise money from those that are traveling there. So right now, it's 24 to $40 a, a day, night. a night. And then what's it going to go? It's going to be 30 to 50 for non-residents. So, uh, But it doesn't apply to tent campers. Well, Tent campers, that's not going to be... They're not going to have to pay more. But they say it's going to raise $1.6 million. Well, all of our state parks need more money, that's for sure. I think uh, it's, with this, this is going to catch on. Yeah, I think we're going to see higher increases for non-residents. Mm -hmm. And Oregon, of course, draws so many of them because it's yeah, such it's a so beautiful, beautiful state. All right, last story is an issue that we have uh, talked about a couple of times this summer, and it's now also a problem with our neighbors to the north in Canada. In British Columbia, they are officials uh, that run their uh, provincial parks are saying, this is getting ridiculous, the number of no-shows we get. People who book a site and never cancel it, but never show up, thereby I, keeping the site unoccupied. You know, nobody can occupy it, but it's, you know, it's just sitting there empty. It's something crazy, like 10 to 15% of their sites, people don't show. And there's all these other folks that could possibly even be there that, that want to camp, and the spot is wasted. And it's, it's the same, if not a higher percentage in the U.S. Many campgrounds have been talking about this all summer long, that uh, what a lot of people have been doing because there's so much competition is you get a reservation at one site and just in case you get another one at another site and you know you can kind of play them off so we're we're safe here we got two days here three days here and and um and, and then you know they don't show and, and they don't cancel they're trying to be gracious to these people saying covid and the fires yeah the fires out west yeah. and covid caused a lot of people to have second thoughts and maybe that certainly did have and an maybe effect. cell coverage but I think there's just a lot of rude people who don't cancel their reservations when they know they're not going to show. So don't let that be you. Maybe right? there should be a little manual you get when you get a vehicle or I've been saying when that for you redo years. your license that just some good manners. Just a, a little etiquette course that mm -hmm. people should all go through. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, we'll keep campaigning on that for a long time. Right. All right, when we come back, uh, we've got uh, your RV questions, and we uh, love uh, hearing from them. So we'll answer a few of those right after this. All RVers need specialized emergency transportation coverage to cover air and ground ambulances, return to home services, and vehicle return. You only have a 68% chance that those services will be completely covered by your major medical. Sad reality is that a lot of people believe they have that coverage, but it turns out most carriers that claim to cover air ambulances only cover you for a hospital to hospital transfer and offer no coverage to get you to the initial hospital in the first place. The truth is 68% of air ambulances are hospital to hospital. Here's a map of all the places in the U.S. That getting to the hospital in the golden hour is not possible without an air ambulance. And with an average cost of $52,481 for an air ambulance, why would you take the risk? Go to peaceofmindforrvs.com today and take a look at the true emergency transportation coverage they offer that covers it all. The coverage can save your life and your life savings. Check it out, peaceofmindforrvs.com. Jennifer and I are members, and we urge you to consider it too. Peace of mind for RVs.com.
When we're asked what's the most important modification we made to our RV, it's an easy answer. Battleborn batteries. Battleborn batteries are quality, safe, reliable lithium batteries that allow us to stay out there off the grid longer. Lithium batteries charge faster, they charge fuller, they're longer lasting, they're maintenance free. And battleborn batteries are protected by a 10 year guarantee. Now, in our case, they just dropped into the existing AGM batteries that we have. And they'll probably be the same on your rig, too. Battleborn battery experts can get those in your rig just like they did with ours. They can also match you up with the right cabling, the inverter, the charger, the solar controller, everything. Jennifer and I swear by our Battleborn batteries. They allow us to boondock off the grid. Check them out. Go to rvlifestyle.com slash lithium rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. Welcome back, everybody. Time for the questions of the week. And uh, what do we got this week? Well, our first question of the week is from Mike Ray. And he says, we want to stay right on the beach where it's warm in February. I was thinking the Florida Keys. Is it possible to really be on the beach like this? I see a lot of campgrounds that are combined with marinas or tucked back in a cove, but I'm talking about backing up to this in the sand where we open the door up to the ocean. Oh, that's I all want of our that dreams. Spot too. Yeah, we all want that spot. Uh, not in the Keys. The Keys, you know, is basically coral reefs, you know, that's what that's all built on. Now, there are some marinas in the Keys that have a little spits of sand that they have. And uh, one of the sites there, um, Boyd's Campground, they've got a couple little coves there. It's not the ocean, but it's, it's sort of connected to it. But they only have a few sites. Um, up a little bit from there, uh, Bahia Honda State Park, it's right on the ocean, but only a few sites, not many. There's some across the street from it, and there's, there's different loops. The site you're talking about, there are, there, are, there are few of them, very few. I think of Gamble Rogers up <laughs> south of St. Augustine. Uh, they have two loops. One of them is right on the Atlantic Ocean, and we snagged a couple of sites there. Uh, because somebody canceled, and they did call in. somebody canceled, and they did call in. We were, but, you know, there's a little sand dune, and then there's the beach. Um, over on the Gulf side, I think of Camp Gulf which is uh, near Destin, uh, between Panama City Beach and, and Destin. They have maybe a dozen sites right on the beach. We've got some pictures of us. That yeah, we, we have up. camped there. You're right in the sand, right on the water. But there are so few. And if you want them for this coming February, I guarantee they're all spoken for. They're all spoken for. Now, maybe you'll get a cancellation. You should always check cancellations. Um, one of the things we could suggest that you do is go to our RV Lifestyle Travel Blog and just do a search, click that little search uh, magnifying glass up in the top right, and search for Florida Beach Camping. We've got a number of stories that list our favorite sites. And uh, if I can shamelessly plug our books, we have written three adventure, RV Lifestyle Adventure Guide tours for, for, for Florida. Uh, one is on the Gulf Coast, and we list a number of places there that are on the beach. Uh, one on the Keys, the best places to stay on the Keys, and one on the Atlantic side. So you can get all of those at, uh, uh, just go to rvlifestyle.com slash books, and you can see our Florida collection and some of our other adventure guides there. But good luck in finding beach camping. Oh. And if you find it, let us know, and we <laughs> promise not to tell Nobody's anybody. Nobody's going to tell you, because you'll tell everybody. I'm, I'm trying not to tell <laughs> too many people. You're trying not to tell too many of the good secrets? Yeah. Okay, now we've got another question. Tell us again the brand name of the sticky tape to hang pictures with uh, in the RV so one doesn't have to use nails and make holes. And this is from Carol. Okay, Carol saw the pictures that we have in our RV uh, and those re th there is some awesome tape on the back of these frames that we have, but they don't sell the tape separately that I know of. The, the product that we use, it's a little frame. It's from a company called Mix Tiles, M-I-X-T-I-L-E-S. And it's a pretty cool thing. It's an app, and you call it up, and you send them your favorite photos from your smartphone, and they will print them up and frame them and ship them to you. And the back of the frame has this really uh, narrow but very, really a great tape that sticks it to the wall. You can remove it and then put it back on. We've had had these mixed tiles up in our RV for about almost three years now. And uh, 
they've been in two RVs. We took them when we sold our last RV. We took them down and and didn't put any new tape or anything. We just put them back in the wall, and they're still on the wall of our second RV. And you know, our RV is always uh, it's constant going down the road. earthquake. Constant earthquake when you go down the road in an RV, and the tiles are still holding on. So. Uh, the company's name is Mix Tiles. We have no connection with them other than the fact that we're customers and the photos that we took, you see them in our videos of, all the time with us when we're in our van. All right. Now, our last question. Uh, this one is from our recent Sunday Night Ask Us Anything program. We had a question from a new RVer who's about to get delivery of a new Class A RV. Congratulations. And he wants to know if it's hard to drive that Class A and he, he's just he's going to go take delivery of it, and he's never driven it before. So here's how we answer that question. Is driving it hard? Well, that's a pretty big unit. So, you know, it's going to take you some getting used to on doing tours, on backing up. Are you going to be towing? You might be towing. Um, so uh, it would be great if the dealer will would – put you up in a campground or let you stay on their lot. That's that's what I love to say. Because most dealers have a hookup on their lot. Can I stay in your lot for the first night so we can run everything, make sure it works? And then in the morning, I can come ask you. Or, and so see if they'll do that for you. Uh, and then, you know, you're spending a lot of money. You know how much you're spending a lot. Of so I, I don't think it is unreasonable for you to say, hey, look, Will you take me to a parking lot or let's go someplace and I need a quick little drive through? I know Lazy Days, the big RV dealer, they actually have a little school that they sell, send their new their new owners to. Which I, we have to go down and do a story on that. They're a Florida opera. We need to go visit them and, and do a story on that mm -hmm. school. That's really customer service. So ask them to hold your hand for the first little bit, you know, mm -hmm. and, and go out and try it. But it's not hard. I mean, you just want to be careful. You want to understand what the vehicle's like when it when it turns and when you back up. That question came on Ask Us Anything. And if you don't know what that is, that is uh, every Sunday night at 7 o'clock Eastern time, Jennifer and I do a show called Ask Us Anything. It goes live, simulcast on our RV Lifestyle Facebook page, our Facebook group, and also our YouTube, uh, RV Lifestyle channel on YouTube. And uh, thousands watch it every uh, Sunday night, and we answer questions for an hour. Uh, and uh, that's uh, where that one came from. And we would love to get your questions, either on Ask Us Anything or here for the podcast. Here's how you can do that. Just take your smartphone, take a selfie, picture of yourself, and ask the question. Uh, run video, say, hey, Mike and Jen, where do you get your hair done, Jen? I really like that, or whatever you want to know. And uh, then just send us that email and we can run your questions. Or you can just send us by email a, a question, just type it up the old fashioned way. Mike and Jen at RVLifestyle.com. All right, when we come back, I'm gonna show them another hidden campground gem from our friend Mark Cap. If you've visited an RV park lately, surely, besides all the RVs, you've seen these e-bikes. Jennifer and I are proud e-bike owners and the e-bike that we chose are Rad Power Bikes. America's number one e-bike brand offering direct-to-consumer pricing on powerful premium electric bikes. Jen and I love our Rad Power Bikes. We use them to go around the campground, to explore the area we're in. I have the city bike version. Hers is the step-through model. And those are just two of a whole bunch of different models offered by Rad Power Bikes. All of them can reach 20 miles an hour with zero pedaling. But of course, you can also pedal, and you've got five different levels of pedal assist to make the going just a little bit easier and fun. You can go between 20 to 40 miles on a single charge. Now, here's the deal. You can save $75 off if you use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE at checkout. Plus, of course, free shipping. All right, time now for Hidden Campground Gems. It's our weekly look at a out-of-the-way campground that has all sorts of things going for it, that you, except you probably never heard of it. But our friend Mark Kep over at campgroundviews.com has not only sought out these campgrounds, he comes on our podcast every week and shares one with us, and he's going to do that this week. And this one has a very unusual name. It's Dinner Station Campground. Here's Mark Kep. I have a search result here on campgroundviews.com that you can see on the screen that shows all of the campgrounds in Colorado that we currently have the campground virtual tours for. And this campground is um, 
is a hidden gem, and, and that's that's tricky in Colorado because a lot of folks camp in Colorado, so there's a lot of parks and campgrounds that aren't exactly hidden, but they are gems. This one is a little hidden. It's called a uh, Dinner Station Campground. It's located. Uh, the address we have is Almont, Colorado, but technically it's north of uh, Gunnison, Colorado. It's up. You go up a canyon road. You make a right. You go up to Taylor Reservoir. And then you take this uh, packed dirt road. It's a dusty dirt road. Nothing crazy. You can get um, most any RV or um, trailer on the road. It's, it's nothing bad. Just need to take your, your time. This area, as you can see from this 360 video, is located in an absolutely stunning region. There are these beautiful Rocky Mountains all around you. Just truly a beautiful, beautiful location to go camping. Dinner Station Campground is a U.S. Forest Service campground. It is very popular with folks who know about the reservoir, so you can go fishing in the reservoir. Um, there are hundreds of miles of ATV trails. In fact, the dirt road that you drive on to get to this campground is the old stage road heading from Gunnison to um, uh, Aspen, Colorado. So there are trails galore if you're a mountain biker, hiker, off-roader, Dinner Station Campground is a hidden gem for you. As you can see, the, the campground itself has packed dirt roads, packed gravelly sites, picnic tables, fire rings. And I'll actually jump ahead here because the, the reason I think this is a hidden gem are some of these sites that are out here. So this is a, wow, that was a good jump right there. Hey, that was, that was the exact site I was looking for. Because as you can see, there's a big fifth wheel and a pickup truck. That is a pull-through site from the road all the way over. You, as you can see, you can fit any size RV in there. And if you had your RV in here, your, your door is facing the river over here and your windows are facing this majestic view. Dinner Station Campground in Almont, Colorado, north of Gunnison. It's um, Gunnison National Forest. Absolutely amazing campground. We'll put the link in the description below. And this has been another Hidden Gem Campground for you. Back to you, Mike and Jen. All right, if you'd like to get more information about the dinner station campground that Mark just talked about, just uh, go to the link in the description below or on the show notes at rvlifestyle.com. Those of you watching on YouTube will uh, put it up on the screen as well, and uh, you can check it up uh, on rvlifestyle.com. We have a table of contents and everything we've talked about, all the links that we've shared, they're all listed there, as well as different time uh, stamps on when you can hear it in the podcast, if you go back and listen to the podcast. And that's it for another week, episode 364. It's over. When we come back next week, it'll be episode 365. So get out there, have fun, enjoy this fall weather, and happy trails.